Flutes are reedless instruments in the woodwind family. The term flute is used to refer to a variety of instruments that produce sound from the flow of air across an opening. However, the term flute mainly refers to the Western concert flute in modern usage. The key difference between flute and recorder is that recorders have a fipple that directs the air across the edge of the tone hole whereas standard flutes don't have a fipple. We will explain the differences in detail. Now it is time to jump in the main video. Before starting the deeper comparison, please subscribe to our channel for further notifications. So, let's start the video. Theobald Bohema, Bavarian musician and inventor, originally designed his flutes with a tapered shape while retaining the traditional wooden build, just as how recorders would be built to this day. Hence, as can be ascertained from the historical data we explain, the flute shape was closely related to its tonality, meaning the decision to build the flute with a cylindrical body was not merely aesthetic. This also lends credence to the theory that shape is far more influential to the flute's acoustics than build material. Both flute and recorder have very similar acoustics. The way we blow both instruments differ greatly. Recorders have more in common with other traditional reed instruments like the oboe and the clarinet without actually having a reed installed. In fact, the part of the instrument whereby we push air is called the mouthpiece, which is the same word we use for both the saxophone and clarinet's windway. As we blow on the recorder, with the aid of the fipple, the air that enters the inner tube is directed onto the edge of the bore via a duct, which prompts the vibration of air particles inside the canal. Recorders, for this reason, are named duct flutes or fipple flutes. Transverse flutes don't have a mouthpiece, as in, they don't carry any component that is placed inside the mouth. Instead, flutes have a section called the head joint, which sports a lip plate and a moderately big embouchure hole. In the case of flutes, our lips would serve the same function as the duct in recorders and carry the burden of directing air towards the edge. This makes flutes harder to play, for we have to compensate for the glaring absence of a physical duct by positioning our lips at accurate angles. Owing to the very nature of the blowing mechanism, it would be expected that the way the instruments are oriented should follow and respect the orientation to which airflow travels. Only exceptionally do we find that this is not the case, but these exceptions stem from ergonomic concerns. One example of these exceptions is the contrabass flute. While the blowing mechanism is essentially the same as with concert flutes, as in, side blown, the design alters the orientation of our airflow, which ultimately travels in a vertical direction after following a horizontal loop. This makes it possible for the contrabass flute to remain somewhat playable. Still, as a rule of thumb, the flute is held sideways or horizontally, in line with its side blown character, while the recorder is held vertically, following the orientation of the duct. This may be one of the most obvious differences, though this doesn't mean that recorders are devoid of keys in all cases. In fact, you will often find that bigger recorders such as the tenor and nick tenor have keys installed. Many great bass recorders have an entire keywork arranged similarly to a flute's keywork, with some distinctions. Yet, the general rule is that flutes have keys while recorders typically don't. You should be capable of discerning the contrast between flutes and recorders using this criterion, albeit not in isolation. Comparing two strong competitors is not just an easy task. However, we've done a little, but choose yours one according to your preferences. This video is just a help over the topic. Hope this video helped you out. Thanks for watching till the end.